Hello everybody, and welcome back. I'm Count Christo, and this is part 6 of the Mayo and Taxes tutorial series for 2.52. I'm Count Christo, and thank you ever so very much for joining me. Today, we're looking at a wonderful and very much overhauled aspect of EU4 play in Mayo and Taxes, religion. This one is going to be a slightly longer one, I suspect, as there's a lot to talk about with the changes to religion. We've hopped over to the good old Ottoman here in the east, rather than Aragon, because they have a slightly less unified religious circumstance to start with. So, first, let's go over two key new modifiers that have been added by Mayo and Taxes. Church influence and piety. Technically, piety, piety exists in vanilla, but now all religions have it, and it is the same sliding scale for each of them. Firstly, church influence. Church influence scales from having no church influence with no modifiers, or 100% church influence with plus 3 missionaries, plus 4% missionary strength, plus 5% administrative cost, minus 6 local unrest, and this is in all provinces, bear in mind, minus 40% local production efficiency, 20% local tax modifier, and 20% local manpower modifier. Now looking at this, this might seem like a rough deal, but remember that, tra that um, money being spent by the church on your education? That total annual church contribution is actually equal to more than the money you are likely to lose from your level of church influence. So this money, much like the half of the money you get from capital buildings, is not lost. It is just invested somewhat forcefully. Having high church influence is, in the current version of the game, almost universally a very, very good thing. You want to have high church influence because you don't really lose money from it, it just goes to your education, and you get missionaries, missionary strength, and local unrest, all of which are great stuff. Don't expect to have any missionaries at the start of the game unless you have sufficient church influence. The base is now zero. It takes power in the church to convert people. Right now we have 55% church influence, which gives us two missionaries, 2.5, uh, I suppose that two might be slightly bugged, we've only got one right now, but whatever. Two missionaries, 2.5 missionary strength, etc., etc. As you see in this very long tooltip, there is a large range of things that affect the level of church influence that we can expect to see. To get a more comprehensive and readable breakdown, go to your decisions menu and find the Ottoman church influence event. When you fire that, it'll show you the various things that can affect it and what they are. If we hover over each of these, it will explain not what we currently have, those are the numbers shown up here, but what we could potentially have. It's very helpful. It's a really nicely designed event. Great work, MNT team. You can also do the same for the other important modifier, piety. But first, let's look at changing church influence. One thing you can do once per ruler lifetime is donate state land to the church. When you do this, you gain some fanaticism, that's at one end of the piety slider, lose a little bit of money, not really a consequential amount, and gain five church influence. This represents, literally, donating land to the church, and you almost always want to do that. Something you can also do is appropriate church property. This goes the other way. Donating land always gives them five church influence. Appropriating means that you take either five or ten. Usually to take ten will cause a religious scandal and cause big problems. So typically you want to take five in the event that fires once you click this. If you want to read through, pause and read through this, you can see all the different scenarios in which you can appropriate church property. Usually it involves things going badly for your nation to give you an excuse to take it from them. Or if you've done a Henry VIII and declared a statute in restraint of appeals, then you are able to do it more easily. Typically, you, strangely enough, want to do both of these as often as possible. You want to donate state lands to the church as often as possible because high church influence is great. You want to appropriate church lands as often as possible because when you appropriate them, you get to sell them off. And, strangely enough, when you sell them, you get a lot more money than you lost when you gave them to them. You can also not sell them, but instead give them to loyal nobles, which gives you estate loyalty and stability points. A lot of stability points. So typically, you want to do these, both of these, as often as you can, without getting nasty modifiers from the events that they potentially fire, so that you can get the best of both worlds. Let's look at piety. Piety is a sliding scale from secularism to fanaticism, and both ends give powerful bonuses. Being in the middle is the worst of both worlds, because you just get a little bit of whichever one you're leaning towards. Secularism gives 12% trade efficiency, 12% less advisor costs, 12% technology costs, and 2 tolerance of heretics and heathens. 
Fanaticism gives better stability, increased interval, more morale of armies, more tolerance of the true faith, lower tolerance of heretics and heathens, more fort defense, and yearly legitimacy. Both of these modifiers are phenomenal and extremely desirable. You want to try and be at 100 of one or the other at almost all times, if at all possible. Again, there is an event, Ottoman Piety, that tells you an exact breakdown of what causes your current piety, as well as telling you what the potentials are for the different things that could be causing your piety to increase or decrease. Lots of these things you don't have direct control over. Often your government form isn't really up to you, but you can influence the idea groups. Note the massive influence that idea groups can have. A potential negative 240% piety or plus 200% piety. In the idea groups tab, and don't worry, there'll be a video on ideas, you can see this little icon next to each idea group, whether it's impious or pious. Impious ones have an X. An idea group gives either 20 or 40 positive or negative piety. Humanist gives negative 40, most of the religion ideas give positive 40, and just slightly impious things like espionage or trade give minus 20. That's piety. Each ruler will also have their own piety. Typically you want to attempt to take various ideas in the same group to drive you towards high piety rather than mixing and matching with humanist and state religion because this will give you a net zero piety change and these bonuses are really quite juicy. In my experience secularism is almost universally the stronger choice even if you're trying to get all of your religion con population converted it's a lot more stable that tolerance of heretics and heathens can really tank your religious unity especially if you're playing in a religiously contested area like the orthodox sunni boundary that's not to say that playing fanaticism can't be fun and very powerful as well just typically as a new player secularism tends to be the way to go However, there is a big negative from secularism, and that is, strangely enough, the tolerance of heretics and heathens. Let's look at how conversion works. We want to convert Ismit. Ismit is currently orthodox, but it's not quite that simple. Mayor and Taxes is a fantastic and deep mod. Orthodoxy merely has the plurality. Not everyone in this province is orthodox. Indeed, there is a 10% tolerated Jewish presence and a 20% Sunni presence. When we click this button, we will convert at a certain rate, which will in fact be uh, sometimes affected by the size of your, uh, your religious minorities, I believe. Actually, that might be wrong. Ignore that one. <laughs> it's affected by many things. And when you convert the province, you don't just suddenly make everyone in the province Sunni. That's unrealistically fast and not really how things work. What you're actually going to do is increase the size of the Sunni community. When the Sunni community becomes a plurality, that is to say the largest group, they will become the province modifier one, and you will get an orthodox minority, similar to the one we almost certainly have in neighboring Bolu. Right here we have a tolerated orthodox minority of 40% of the population. During the Reformation, you can see some strange things happen in Europe, when, for example, there is a small Jewish presence in Prague, representing 10 or maybe 20 or 30 percent, but because there's four different Christian sects all fighting it out for control, Judaism will sometimes become the majority religion of some large, uh, sorry, the plurality religion of some large cities in Europe, which is always fun to see. So, you convert provinces, but note that because we are quite tolerant, tolerance minus 0.3, that's because we have a tolerance of heathens right now of, I, I think it's just displaying zero as a, as a rounding error, we have a tolerance of about 0.3. One point of positive tolerance directly correlates to minus one point of conversion, and you will note that some advisors, like this guy, the Inquisitor, give you minus four tolerance of heretics. That effectively gives you plus four percent conversion strength against heretics. So the Inquisitors are phenomenally powerful. This overall is a plus seven percent missionary strength against heretics. Obviously the Orthodox are not heretics to us, but noting that right now we can get a conversion strength of minus 1.6, you can see how plus seven could be an incredibly powerful bonus. Expect it to take many trips of your um, uh, of your missionary to a particular province to get it converted. And don't be confused if it flips to your religion after it is converted. It will likely flip back the first few times as you grow the size of your religious 
minority that follows the one true faith, which is of course, whichever one you're playing as. We've switched over to Bohemia to talk a little bit about converting your religion. Bohemia will have the Kalanixine heresy begin, the Hussites, later in the game, and there's a really fun campaign you can play by switching to them and seeing what you can do to hold out against Catholic Europe before the Protestants come along to make everything even more complicated. But converting is quite a different process in this wonderful mod of ours. It's a lot more difficult to start with and different things can make it a bit easier. It's going to take you a long time to convert your population to your new religion, and so let's take a look at what happens if we were to convert right now to Duelist. So, almost none of our people currently support this religion, so we lose stability. The state church has some power to oppose us, so we lose stability. Our ruler and bureaucracy are able to inspire the people, so we get plus 100 stability points. There are four, four different categories of things that can affect how much stability you lose and gain when you convert religion. Depending on what percentage of your population follow your nation, the, sorry, what follow the religion you're trying to switch to, you gain or lose stability. If between 75 and 100% of your people already follow the religion, you actually gain one stability by converting. If between 50 and 75 follow it, it's neutral. Between 25 and 50, you lose one. And between zero and 25, you lose two. As you can see, there are no dualists in our nation, so we'd lose two. Next, church influence. Between 50 and zero, you lose no stability. Between 75 and 50, you lose one. And between 175, you lose two. So. You want to be converting with a weak church so that you have less people around to oppose your new decision. If you have between three and four administrative skill, then you gain one stability when you convert. And in this case, it's not actually exactly one stability. It's 100 stability points. If you have between five and six administrative skill, you gain two or actually 200 stability points. If your capital province has already officially embraced the particular religion, so let's say Prague had a plurality of duelists, you gain another one stability. So if you have 75% of your religion, of your nation already following one religion, and you have six admin on your ruler, and your capital province follows that religion, you can actually gain four stability by switching to that religion. Also, if you have a theologian, if you have been a religion previously, if you have converted from another religion recently, converting gives you plus one stability in each of those cases. However, if a religion has not been officially unlocked yet, you lose one additional stability. So, convert when you have a theologian, a high administrative ruler, and ideally after some of your nation has already converted to that religion. The Reformation is a whole complicated kettle of fish that we're not going to super go into, but make sure you read the events that you get when playing in Catholic Europe as the game progresses. Various of them will be very explicit about saying, this is you choosing a side in the Reformation. When you choose a side, that doesn't mean you convert immediately, but it does mean that people in your culture group will begin to sway to your way of thinking. Consider yourself as an English nation ruling lots of French lands. Your rulers start to say lots of negative things about the Pope. You can see how that might make your Norman and Breton subjects begin to feel affinity for the Pope in the way that because they don't like their southern English overlords. So make sure that you, when you're converting you know that your core regions are very likely to sway to your way of thinking. However, oppressed other regions which are sweating under the English yoke, for example, are likely to oppose you and will become ever more fervent in their loyalty to the Bishop of Rome. Read the events on the Reformation. I'll say it one more time. There's lots of really interesting event chains and they're really fun and engaging and they're very descriptive about how you should play with them. So that wasn't too bad, only about 15 minutes. That's religion in Mayo and Taxes. As a little addendum, let's talk a bit about culture. Culture is interesting, and we'll use the Ottomans as an example of it. Culture is somewhat similar to religion in that it is no longer tracked on a per-province basis, in that it is not exactly just uh, integers. Provinces will slowly convert to your religion, over, your culture, sorry, over time. This province is Turkish. This province is Greek and owned by us. Greek will slowly, this Greek province will slowly convert to Turkish. And if you look at this button, interact with province, 
examine province data in detail, population de uh, detail, we can see the degree to which the culture conversion is underway. Right now, almost 1% of this province has converted. Once it's finished converting, the province will flip from Greek to Turkish, and then it can start converting its adjacent provinces. The speed at which that conversion takes place is affected by a few factors. In this particular case, Greek and Turkish can actually convert to each other faster than most cultures are capable of doing so. The other thing that affects it is that you convert uh, cultures that you accept much, much more slowly. So you may not wish to accept provinces, uh, cultures that you think you're close to because those are ones that you're going to be able to convert in the fullness of time. Also note that you can only convert by adjacency. Across a setile adjacency does not count, although across a strait, I believe, does. So you want to try and make sure you have enough adjacency to get your culture conversion going along nicely. Culture conversion progress will only proceed in a province that does not have any nationalism and where you have at least one tolerance towards the local religion. So right now, I think we're going to make no progress towards converting Izmit until we become a little bit more tolerant of the Orthodox locals or we convert them to the one true faith, which of course, again, is the one we follow. There are a few other things you can do to affect cultural conversion, but they're a lot more specific, so we'll leave it there for now. So that is religion, with a little bonus culture in Mayo and Taxes 2.52. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Next time, we're going to dive into the wonderful world of ideas.